America's public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. Drugs are menacing our society. They're threatening our values and undercutting our institutions. They're killing our children. In 1994, respected journalist Dan Baum interviewed former Nixon domestic advisor and former Watergate co-conspirator John Ehrlichman for a book he was writing on the war on drugs. The interview published in Harper's Magazine quotes Ehrlichman as saying, The Nixon campaign in 1968 and the Nixon White House after that had two enemies, the anti-war left and black people. You understand what I'm saying? We knew we couldn't make it illegal to be either against the war or black, but by getting the public to associate hippies with marijuana and blacks with heroin, and then criminalizing both heavily, we disrupt those communities. We could arrest their leaders, raid their homes, break up their meetings and vilify them night after night on the evening news. Did we know we were lying about drugs? Of course we did. Today, in 2017, the war on drugs is proclaimed worldwide as a failure, with total estimated costs equaling over a trillion dollars in the US alone. According to the 2013 Drug Strategy Household Survey detailed report in 2004 to 2005, the cost of illicit drugs in Australia was $8.2 billion. If we listen to John Ehrlichman and adjust the publicly stated aims of the war on drugs and change them to the privately planned goals, then the war on drugs has been a success. Nixon's war on drugs has been contributed to by all the American presidents since Ronald Reagan's minimum sentencing laws and Bill Clinton's 5 grams of crack to 500 grams of cocaine ratio, and has contributed to the now over 2 million Americans that are incarcerated, with a reported 1.2 million of them for drug offences. Since its official inception in 1971, of the thousands of arrests that have been made in America, a disproportionate number of them are black people. In fact, if you're a black man, you are 2.5 times more likely to be arrested for a drug offence in America. So what does that mean to us in Australia? The racial disparity for drug-related arrests does not exist here. The policy of least harm has long been finding its way into public policy here in Australia. Australia is completely decriminalised for the use of cannabis in the Northern Territory, South Australia and ACT, with diversion programs operating in all other states. Medical marijuana is approved for use under very strict guidelines starting in November 2017. But small steps are there to be made and can change lives, like multiplying the number of publicly available injecting rooms. Despite the success of the Wayside Chapel project in Sydney, which has been running since 1999, Australia has only had the one facility in that 18 years. In that time, there has been no fatalities and it has contributed to the downward spiral of HIV amongst its users. Why hasn't it been used as a model to take to other locations around the country is a question left in political malaise. For a policy that was birthed in racism and intolerance as a mean to conquering those outcomes covertly, why is it that our system lacks the fortitude to right our wrongs without delay? While lobbyists and politicians decide on which way is best or how best to proceed, their very broken war against drugs wages onwards. Support for legalisation of cannabis has grown with 43% of Australians backing legalisation according to a three-year study by the Australian National University, thanks to the brave efforts of other countries who have taken the first steps in trying a new approach. Readily available longitudinal data is now available from countries such as Portugal, the Netherlands, the Czech Republic and Uruguay, who has been decriminalised for 40 years. Whilst American President Donald Trump and US Attorney General Jeff Sessions are showing a renewed commitment to the war on drugs, is it time for Australia to show an example of what happens when you put your citizens first and admit that when it comes to drug policy, we were following the lead of a country that was hiding their real political motivations in the first place?